Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Patricia Capella, Conference Manager with Clarion Events Food and Beverage Group. Uh, please join me today in welcoming Kelly uh, D. Ball, a member of GoDaddy's Social's webinar team, who will be sharing with us in just a few moments the five ways on how restaurants can adjust their social media strategies. Kelly is passionate about educating customers on how to grow their brand on social media and manage their reputation online, and we are very lucky to have her with us today to do so. Before we start the presentation, I would quickly like to go over some housekeeping items to keep in mind. All audience members are in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to participate by using the question pane. There will be time for questions at the end of the presentation and we will be monitoring throughout, um, as well as sharing some links with you on your chat box. So make sure to keep an eye there as well, but I believe Kelly will let you know when something's coming your way. We are recording this webinar and you will receive an email with a copy of the recording and it will also become available on our foodandbevshows.com website in the coming week. Now, without further delay, let me turn the program over to Kelly. Kelly? Thank you so much for that intro. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. We have some really great tips for you. Um, and we're going to talk about five ways that you can adjust your social media strategy for your restaurant or bar. So summer is such a perfect time for your business to capture the attention of new customers on your social media with fun and creative content. And we know it can be difficult for you to come up with some engaging content ideas while you're running your business, but don't worry guys, we have you covered. And right now we know some, we know times are difficult for some right now through this global pandemic, but GoDaddy is doing so much to help our customers through this time because we understand that you need us now more than ever. So we are providing free education to small businesses through webinars and eBooks so that you can continue to market your business and use social media to your advantage. So GoDaddy also launched Open We Stand, which provides free resources, inspiration, and connection to everyday entrepreneurs. It also offers creative solutions to keep your businesses open, even if your doors are closed at this time. And we're gonna drop a link for that website. It's openwestand.org. So let's jump into our webinar today. So like she said earlier, my name is Kelly Deball. I'm one of our webinar managers on our GoDaddy social team. And in case you're not too familiar with GoDaddy social, but we help thousands of businesses build their brand on social media's platform like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as help manage your reputation online at Yelp and Google. So thank you everyone for being here today. A um, little bit about me, I've been with GoDaddy for about two years now, and I've worked in customer development, event management, and now webinars, and I am based out of Arizona. So I'm so excited to be here with you guys. We usually attend um, and exhibit at a lot of the Clarion Foods trade shows. So although we're really sad we can't be there this year, I am so happy to be able to still connect with you through our webinar today. So we're gonna cover a couple topics today. First, we're gonna talk about user-generated content. And this is something really important to be using right now, especially when we're not always seeing our customers in the stores. We gotta wanna make sure that we're connecting with them through our social media platforms. We're also gonna cover how to run an Instagram contest or a giveaway. Um, and this is one of my favorite topics because there are so many different ideas and ways to get more customers in the door and see repeat business and new business. So we're going to talk about that through doing giveaways. We're also going to talk about how to use your Instagram stories to connect. Instagram stories are a great way to use your social media to really connect with your customers because you can show behind the scenes of your business um, and be really authentic and raw and less polished through there. We're also going to talk about how to use seasonal content to stay top of mind. And then lastly, we're going to talk about sharing your reviews, um, positive or negative, and responding to them. So let's dive into our first tip today, tap into user-generated content. So one way to tap into user-generated content is to repost customers' photos on your page. Consumers are sharing their favorite summer activities, maybe their favorite spots to eat, um, grab takeout and do a picnic, or even just a happy hour drink, all on their social media through their posts and their stories. So you wanna monitor your Instagram account by watching your tags, comments, and likes, and really see who's talking about you online. Guys, 75% of consumers will share a positive experience with a brand. 
consumers are also 70% more likely to make a purchase with a company after a good interaction. This really shows that no matter the social network, a good interaction or a positive experience really does wonders for your brand. And user-generated content doesn't have to be difficult. Actually, it's a really simple process of asking your customers to post content for you to repurpose for your brand. So here we have a couple examples. On the left, we have Postino's Wine Cafe, um, and they have this photo of their happy, um, their happy hour bruschetta board. And you can tell it was repurposed from a customer because in the caption, they have a camera emoji, and then tagging the customer's handle who originally posted the photo. And they used it, you can write, you know, whatever caption um, you want. If you have a new recipe, a new menu item, you can repurpose the photo for anything you like. Just make sure to give credit to the original um, user who posted the photo. And then on the right here, we have Fate Brewing Company on Facebook saying, starting the week off right and reposted it from um, a beer porn who posted this hot chili gatos outside. So great picture. Um, awesome. So you also uh, want to make sure that you are tagging your customers in the photos that you're reposting, really giving them credit and saying thank you for coming in. So on the left again, we have Fate Brewing Company, and they say just a reminder that your furry friends are always welcome on your on our patio and use the hashtag Pups of Fate, and then gave credit to the user who originally posted this photo. And then on the right, another post from Postinos, who's trying to have a hashtag Postino patio picnic this weekend, um, and made gave credit to the original user who posted the photo. So when you find great content from someone posting about your business, go ahead and repost it, or you can even add it to your Instagram story. So you can use a reposting app, or you can just tag the user who originally posted the photo and thank them for sharing it. You can even message the user of the original photo and say, hey, thank you so much for coming in. We love your picture, can we repost this? It really gives the attention of your business to the customer to thank them for coming in and also thanking them for sharing their experience with their followers. So like I said earlier, you also want to make sure you're tagging the customer in the photos. Tagging the user who originally posted the photo is a great way to thank fans of your business for coming by and sharing content and their experience about your business. Couple ways you can tag them. You can use their handle in the caption um, along with the camera emoji. It's pretty popular, just like in these two photos here. Or on the right, if you see in the photo that Melissa King is actually tagged in the photo, um, and this is actually done from a repost app, which you can tell in the bottom left, um, it is reposted. So tag tag the original user who posted the photo, you can add it in the photo through posting it, and you can also add it in the caption mentioning the user, um, and using the camera emoji is great. So here is another example. We've got Olive and Ivy, sit back, sit back, relax, and let us take care of the cooking, and tagged the original user who posted the photo. And here's a couple more examples. We have the Henry. On the left, we they say someone knows how to start their week off right and tagged in at Charlotte Doodle Girl, which is so cute because this is a dog Instagram account. So they repost it from that. And then on the right, they repurpose this photo promoting their Father's Day um, and say celebrating dad at home with cocktails is the best way to celebrate Father's Day and then tags the original. Uh, user. So you can repurpose customers' photos um, for a couple things. You can repurpose, you know, just for fun, but you can also tie it into your content strategy. Um, tie it to different holidays. Tie it to happy hour um, or deal, you know, certain deals weekly, daily that you are doing um, and just make it fun and really informative. So let's talk about branded hashtags. Uh, a really great tip to see what your customers are posting at your business is to use branded hashtags that match your business name like here. We've got Social Tap Scottsdale. 
Um, and this was a user generated post because they tagged the user with a camera emoji. And then you can see the hashtags below. And these are some really great hashtags. We have hashtag social tap Scottsdale, which matches the name of the business. And then they have a couple different local hashtags, Scottsdale, Arizona, Old Town Scottsdale. Um, and then they even put Scotchdale, Scotch and Weekend. So this is a great way to see what your customers are posting um, while using your product. So if you don't have a branded hashtag, it's really easy to create one and start using. It can be something super simple like hashtag the name of your business. That's probably the most um, easiest one to use uh, because it looks just like your profile account, right? So you can hashtag the name of your business or you can get a little creative and you can start using different local hashtags that match you know the town the state um, maybe the area the shopping complex that you guys are in you also can get a little creative and use hashtags that kind of just go along with what you're posting so let me go to the next slide so here we have fate brewing company and you can see all their hashtags they have a lot of az beer arizona beer drink local beer um and etc because they all go along with beer especially because it's a brewing company so you can use different um, hashtags that are relevant to your brand, your local area, and your industry. And you can use up to 30 hashtags per post. But when you go over 10, you start to see your engagement dropping. So you want to make sure that your picture is looking still visually um, appealing. You don't want to overload people with too many hashtags. We really recommend using anywhere from two to five hashtags. Um, and you can add them in the caption or you can even add them in the first comment so it kind of hides them. So how to search for branded hashtags. So if you wanna search for branded hashtags, and this is something I really um, recommend every business to do, spend some time you know, once a month just really finding um, a couple solid hashtags to use. So you wanna search the branded hashtag. So I took Scottsdale AZ here. And on the left, you can see I typed in Scottsdale AZ and it pulls up the hashtag and all related hashtags people are using along with it. And it tells you how many posts are currently being used with that hashtag. So you obviously want to choose the hashtags that have the most. So we've got 415,000 for Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and then once you click on that hashtag, we go to the next photo and it shows you all the photos that are currently using that hashtag tagged. Um, and then it also shows you different related hashtags that you can use as well. Um, but yeah, take some time, really search for some, some branded hashtags that go along with your business, whether they be um, you know, your local area, your industry, or just anything that really aligns with your brand and keep it in your notes somewhere so that you can kind of copy and paste and use them for your photos moving forward use them in your content strategy you can even add some of your um you know really solid hashtags to your bio on instagram too so people know what to hashtag when they're posting photos at your business so here we go is another one on the right we've i looked up hashtag burger and we've got 16.9 million people talking about this right now just burger you can even use burgers burger king uh, the list goes on. So when I clicked on the first one, these are all the all the posts that are currently being used with the hashtag burger. And it's also a really great idea to kind of get some photo inspo. You know, if you're a little lost or um, in a rut on what kind of uh, pictures to post that go along with your brand, your food, search a hashtag and maybe just look at what other businesses similar to yours are posting so you can get some ideas of new content, new photos to take to use hashtags and to post about your business. So I know I said incorporate local hashtags um, a little bit earlier, but I, I really wanna highlight again because using local hashtags really grabs the attention of people searching for something very specific for businesses like yours in your area. Um, for example, foodies in Austin, Texas love using the hashtag, hashtag ATX Eats. So really incorporate local hashtags because it'll get more attention from local people searching for something specific, but also it'll really bring them in and drive traffic to your business. All right, let's talk about our second tip. Run an Instagram contest or a giveaway. So first and foremost, 
you need to ensure that you're doing everything above board. And that means taking a few minutes to really learn the rules for Instagram contests. The last thing you wanna do is put all this time and effort into getting your contest up and running and then having it taken down for violating Instagram's policies. So here's a couple things to highlight. Your contest must include rules, terms, and eligibility requirements. And you also have to make it clear that your contest is not sponsored by or associated with Instagram. And then also Instagram is all about being visual, even when it comes to contests and giveaways. So your contest um, needs to have a graphic that's really engaging or eye-catching or a photo that really draws people in. And it could be a photo of your business, maybe your food, maybe the product, whatever you're giving away, make sure it's really eye-catching so that when someone sees it, it really grabs their attention. So here we have, um, here we have Takaya in. This was posted, this was a contest they did for all of their different locations. So I pulled an example from each page. So they have a couple of things here that I just wanna highlight. So on the left, um, the giveaway is already closed and they always update it when it's over. So what you wanna do is um, let people know what your giveaway is. Um, in a couple of things, they ask people to like the post, to tag someone they want to take with them um, to the restaurant and that you must be following the account. And then let them know when you're gonna announce the giveaway um, winners. And then in the middle, we have a celebration for Taco Tuesday, where they're giving away um, a code for Postmates to get a free taco with their order. And then on the far right, we have another contest where they're giving away a $50 gift card. So all really great contests. Um, you know, you can give away gift cards, you can give away a specific deal on your meal. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be an entire bill free, but it's just something that gets people's attention, that gets people really excited to want to win something to come into your business. And then um, create an engaging contest. So another way to run a contest is to ask your followers to comment and tag their friends in your posts because you're asking people to, um, when you ask people to tag others in the comments, it gives your profile more attention and more eyes from people that might not be following you, but um, will definitely be following you and enter your giveaway once they are tagged in it and see that you're giving away free tacos. I mean, who wouldn't want to win free tacos, right? So here is a really great graphic and it's pretty simple. Um, tacos for two giveaway, follow the account, tag a friend in the comments, who loves tacos as much as you do. And then an extra entry, you can repost the picture with their branded hashtag, tacos for two. And something else you could do is you can also ask people to reshare the post on their story for an extra drawing. Just gives their followers another, um, another chance for more people to have more eyes on your posts um, and more people to enter. So also use your Instagram stories to communicate with your con to communicate your contest, so you can post um, post your contest on your feed. You can also add that post to your story, and then you can kind of use your story to announce the winners, like we have here. Um, this is Toka Madeira, and they did a couple of slides where you tap through, and as you tap through, more um, more writing appears, and they this is how they um, they announce the winners of their Instagram contest. So something else you could do is you can run a giveaway with teaming up with another business um, and do a shared giveaway. And that way the post gets posted on your profile, gets posted on the other companies who are doing the giveaway with you. So you kind of share different followers from each profile and reference each other. So you can ask people to like, comment, um, comment their friends and tag people. You can also tell people that they need to follow both of the accounts like they did here. Uh, and this is a really cool giveaway because they did this around Father's Day. So um, they did a big Father's Day giveaway. It says you must enter both company, you must follow both companies and tag three friends. And then another entry, you can repost it to your story, tagging both companies. Um, and what you can do too is while you're asking people to follow both companies, you can ask people to comment on both of them. So you're your um, each person is is getting a new follower you know each account is because you're asking for more eyes on your profile 
So giveaways, really great way to get people engaged and bring in new business. Once someone wins one of your giveaways, the world the word travels really fast through the telephone pole. You know, they're telling all their friends, their families, their followers that they won this really awesome giveaway, how excited they are. And then people will start to, you know, look at your profile, knowing their friend won something and start following you. They could become your potential future customer. All right, so we're going to talk about in using Instagram stories to connect with your customers. So get consistent with your Instagram stories. It can be really fun to use Instagram stories because you can use it to share less polished and in the moment content. You can post photos and videos of your work. You can share um, new menu items. You can even share different events or uh, a new opening of your business. The list goes on, but really just showcase everything happening at your business, especially this summer. And you can be very authentic, kind of showing behind the scenes um, and whatnot on your stories. So first thing you can share is you can share user generated content. So if you're tagged in a photo, um, you can add it to your story. So to repost user generated content, you just want to click on the right arrow in the top corner of your home page. And if it has a red notification, it means that you could have been tagged in a post. So go to that post, add it to your story and start using geotags. Um, you can also tag the customers who originally post the photo also on your story. Um, and you can start using different, um, you can dress it up using different gifts and emojis and whatnot. So here are a couple more examples. We've got Buck and Ryder, and they reposted this from a customer, a story. And then, and then in the middle, we have Pomo Pizza, um, and they also reposted this was a customer visiting their ice cream, um, their ice cream bar. And then on the far right, we have another story that was reposted, originally posted from a customer. So when you're using Instagram stories, um, like I said earlier, you can geo use geotags. You can geotag your neighborhood. You can tag the name of your business. You can also use mentions and hashtags, but you don't necessarily have to use these all at the same time. But these kind of tags will really help boost your engagement because you're involving your neighborhood, you're involving trending topics, and also other users in your content, which then encourages interaction and starts conversation. So also post updates about your business. Um, if you have new menu items, if you have maybe like a new happy hour drink or a daily special, um, a lot of restaurants are doing new carry out, uh, carry out takeout deals for take home meals. So that is a really great idea to post on your Instagram story. Also, here we have Diego Pops and they've been doing a lot of um, like family family takeout deals uh, while we've kind of you know been staying at home and stuff so here is a, a full menu of what their takeout box includes and then on the right side here is just a picture uh, showing you kind of what comes in the adult lunch box and they also use their geotag um, diego pops here it's in rainbow And here's a couple more examples. We've got Volante Scottsdale on the left. They're showcasing their lemon blueberry cheesecake. Holy yum. And then in the middle, we've got a triple chocolate espresso cake. So, I mean, if someone, if I see this on Instagram story, it has already caught my attention. And I'm like, I'm going there for dessert. That looks great. <laughs> and then on the right, this is a user-generated post. And they reposted this from Scottsdale AZ, which is really awesome so funny. So use it, use your stories to be informative, share updates about your business. Um, recently, Pomo Pizza in Arizona did a service uh, industry day, uh, giving happy hour specials to all people in the industry. So they posted this on their story, uh, said the locations, the day, the time, you know, all the info. And then on the right here was a repost of a story, someone kind of just walking through showing all the deals and all the industry people getting together. Um, so really cool, kind of just behind the scenes, really nice for them to offer that. So um, post any kind of updates and deals that you have going on on your stories also. 
And then if you guys have a food truck, I know food trucks are really popular right now during summer. Um, there's a lot here in Arizona right now. So I love kind of trying out new food trucks um, and seeing menus, but Instagram stories is a great way to really fastly communicate your food trucks. So here's a couple, here's a sequence story from Maple and Ash. And on the left, they have their food truck schedule. They have the location it's at and they have a very delicious looking cheeseburger. And I'm in Arizona right now, so it's almost lunchtime. So that's making me hungry. And then in the middle, they have the full food truck menu, all their food, their drinks, their wine, their beer, et cetera. And then on the far right, they have a screenshot of the map of where they're going to be parked. So people know where to find them because this shopping center is pretty big um, and there's a lot of parking lots around. So it's a really smart idea to pinpoint for your customers where exactly you're gonna be parked and where they can find you and let them know how long you're gonna be there too, what hours you'll be there. So um, also post photos of new menu items, post photos of um, you know, the time of day, maybe what meal people would be eating, because if I am trying to figure out where I want to go, you know, to dinner one night, or maybe this weekend where I'm looking at going to try something new for dinner, and I see something come up that looks great, I'm going to be very intrigued um, and, you know, want to catch the eye of people, especially if they've never been to your business, or if you have new menu items, new seasonal items, post it on your story, because customers will not be able to resist food. <laughs> food really brings the attention of, of new people um, and new menu items, seasonal items, even if it's like a new cold brew drink that you're making or a new margarita that you're featuring, post it on your story. People will love to see it and they will be coming to your business very, very soon. So also use Instagram highlights and this is a really helpful trick because your Instagram stories only post for about 24 hours, right? So when it goes away, it's gone. But if you create Instagram highlights, you can save any of your stories in the highlights. So I like to tell people to categorize their Instagram stories um, that go along with maybe uh, menu items, uh, specials, happy hour, maybe events, anything like that. So here's an example of Diego Pops and they have two highlights saved right now. One is for reviews and that's a really great way to save reviews also, but also one for specials. And when you click on specials, we got this screenshot on the left side and this was posted two weeks ago. So you can save them in there forever, not just 24 hours. Um, so people can really reference what specials you have going on, whether they be current weekly, um, it's a great way for customers to really reference what you're offering. Um, so here we got happy hour and we also have their taco Monday specials. So some other ideas of categories you can save for highlights. You can do one for drinks. You can do daily specials, happy hours, events, reviews. You can even highlight what season it is. So you can highlight like a summer seasonal menu, um, anything to just really separate your work um, and get people's attention. So now we're gonna dive into our next tip. We've got use seasonal content to stay top of mind. So like I said at the beginning, summer, it's a perfect time to capture attention of new customers, right? So post seasonal menu items, maybe different summer specials you guys are having. Here we have Postino's Wine Cafe again, and they have a summer drink, they call it Holly's Way, and they let you know everything in it, it says, and she's fond of patio hangs during summertime. That's the other thing too. People love being outside. Maybe not in Arizona because it's about 110 degrees out. But if you have misters and it's, you know, maybe later at night or early in the morning, there's definitely a lot of people still on the patios. So um, engage and attract your customers, both new and current customers, and post about content during the time of year. So then on the right, we've got a board and bottle all day available for curbside pickup. And this is one of my favorite deals because they give you a board of bruschetta and a bottle of wine all for $25, both in, in dining and takeout. So really highlight your seasonal deals um, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, all on social media. So here's a few more examples. Uh, we got tacos. Monday Mondays are for tacos. 
this is interesting because usually it's Taco Tuesday, right? But if you want deals on tacos, I know where I'm going because they're only $3 all day long. And they've got some branded hashtags in here too, as you see. We've got Taco Monday, we've got Diego Pops, and we've got Downtown Scottsdale. Really solid three good hashtags. And then on the right, we've got the Lodge Temp P. Um, and this is a new, new menu item they've added. It's the Nashville Hot Chicken Sandwich. You can do it in a wrap or in a sandwich. So share updates on new menu items capture to capture attention of new customers and also share happy hours and daily specials. So on the left, we've got Diego Pops um, and they're saying enjoy one of our ceviches. Um, it's a beautiful day and we've got our mariachi band from five to seven. And then on the right, this is a new drink added to the menu um, and it looks like it's a coconut margarita. Looks pretty good. And celebrate holidays. So a great way to engage your customers to attract both the new um, and returning customers is to talk about content at the time of year. So yeah, we're talking about summer, but also let's talk about holidays. So we just passed Father's Day. Um, we just passed 4th of July. So upcoming we have, I know, um, Labor Day is coming up. And also you can celebrate unofficial holidays too. So here they did a post about their upcoming deals. And if you're going to do deals for a holiday, you want to post in advance, probably about a week or so in advance, and then leading up to it. So people know what kind of specials, maybe if you have a special menu um, and where they can plan on making a reservation to go celebrate that holiday. So also use hashtag holidays to stay top of mind. Um, this is kind of like I said earlier with branding hashtags. Um, and even tags. So we just had restaurant week here in Arizona um, a couple weeks ago. And so there were a lot of hashtags AZ restaurant week, but also tags AZ restaurant week. So people knew kind of where to where to look for what deals and what companies were participating in the restaurant week and what they were offering. So here we've got Acatillo Phoenix um, and they tagged AZ restaurant week starting um, and let people know what the three course meal was that they were offering. And they also have branded hashtags at the bottom. And then on the right, we've got Diego Pops and they did this for Father's Day and then they hashtag happy Father's Day. So when you're posting deals for holidays, whether they be official, unofficial, use the hashtag for your deals so people know um, where to search. And if you also use your local hashtags, so if you're hashtagging Father's Day, hashtag Scottsdale, Arizona. I live in Scottsdale. I'm going to look for Father's Day deals. I'm going to see that post. And celebrate unofficial holidays um, with new specials. So Taco Tuesday, that's very easy weekly unofficial holiday. Um, if you do Taco Tuesday deals, post it and use the hashtag. We also just had National Rosé Day. So this was a great post by Olive and Ivy posting um, a bunch of glasses of rosé and said, let us fill up your refreshing and sophisticated flavors of this season. Hashtag National Rosé Day. So you can literally go on Google and search calendar for unofficial holidays. Um, there's so many links that come up. I saw there were weekly unofficial holidays, daily unofficial holidays, even like national barbecue month so they have so many different unofficial holidays so literally just google it and see if any of them really relate to your business and add it to your content calendar if you're coming up with um, a strategy for next month really incorporate the unofficial holidays you can add um, add a deal for or special for um, for your business and we're going to talk about our last tip today oh one more slide sorry guys forgot so share food truck food, share food truck info if applicable. So here was a post by Maple and Ash, and I showed these Instagram stories earlier of their food truck, but they also did a post about it. Um, and they say, grab our famous juicy burger on the food truck tomorrow. Um, we're going to be at Scottsdale Quarter from this time. Here's on the menu. And then use some hashtags. And then they also tagged in um, the th top three hashtags are the shopping centers all around where they're going to be parked 
And then they also hashtagged the company, hash, um, added the burger, and added Scottsdale Quarter. So they tagged all the places they were going to be near, which is great um, because you're just adding more eyes on your profile by using hashtags and tags. So now we're going to talk about our last tip. Share your positive reviews and respond. So another way you can foster a large community and really stay engaged is by responding to reviews. And that means both positive and negative reviews, right? So as a small business owner, you know better than anyone that a positive word of mouth is a very powerful marketing tool and the best way to spread the word about all the great things customers can expect. So one of the most essential parts of that process is responding to each and every review that comes in for your business. Remember, your review response doesn't only benefit the individual who left the review, but every person that's going to your business's review site to confirm your hours, to navigate your location, and to check your star rating can see your reviews, and they also could see how you respond to the reviews. So here we have, uh, this is a positive review, um, and they're just saying, I love the place, the wait staff is exceptional, um, the food's good, and this is one of the first started, when, when the restaurant started opening, this was the first place they wanted to go. So the owner responded and he responded personally. Um, and so first he addressed, he addressed Mike who um, originally posted the review. So he's personalizing it. Thrilled to hear you love the place, Mike. Thanks for the kind words. Come back and visit us again real soon. Kevin, general manager. So by really personalizing your response to the review, it humanizes you, right? It doesn't make you seem like you're just a robot or that you're responding and saying the same response to all of your reviews. Really personalize it. Thank your customer for the review. Ask them to come back in. Tell them you're excited to see them again. And then sign your name or sign your position. So when... A customer sees that you've taken the time to respond to each review. They really know how much that you value your customers and they might be more likely to do business with you. So when a customer has a positive experience at a business, it's less likely to occur to them to write a review than if they had a negative one. So remind customers who have had a positive experience at your business about your presence on review sites and showcase your stores for other positive reviews. So here is another one. Um, amazing work done by Sue. She altered the dress for me last minute, was fairly priced and communicated well through the entire process. Absolutely would recommend. And then Sue responded, Morgan, your recommendation means a lot. It was my pleasure to work with you. Wishing you the best. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything else. All the best. Made by Sue. So by personally responding, personalizing the comment and response, it really humanizes you and it shows your customers how much that you value them using your service, but also them reviewing and talking about your service and really appreciating it. So don't let, don't let the negativity get you down. So personally, um, I don't do business with anyone who doesn't have a few reviews out there unless it's an opening business. Um, and what might even be weirder is that I'm more inclined to trust a company if their reviews include a few negative ones as well. Someone who's been around and has no negative re reviews appears to be hiding bad feedback. And even though that's certainly not always the case, it's just how it looks. So pro tip, don't delete your bad reviews. Instead, reply to them. So responding to a negative review, it shows that you care. It shows that you're honest and it shows how you react to unha unhappy customers. Um, and that kind of candor really earns a lot of goodwill. So I cannot stress enough how far that goodwill will carry in a social climate like the one we are experiencing now. So here we have Leslie, um, and this is a one star review saying, they charged me for my food and never brought me my order. And the owner responded, addressing Leslie, we're sorry you didn't have a better experience with us. Quality and accuracy of orders are important, so we'll be looking into what happened here. Again, we're so sorry. So respond personally, acknowledge what's going on here. You can even ask them for a contact number or an email that you can contact off the platform so you can really make it right. 
it humanizes you. It shows that you're honest. This shows that customers, that you value your customers. Um, and that just really shows who you are as a business owner. So also share your positive reviews. So remember earlier when I was talking about Instagram highlights and Diego Pops had a highlight save for reviews. Really great marketing tool to showcase your positive reviews. So I like what they did here. They screenshotted some of these reviews from Yelp um, and then even Facebook reviews, even Google reviews, you know, anywhere you're getting reviews, if they're positive, screenshot them and share them. Um, because when people are looking in your Instagram account, um, they're going to tap through and kind of see everything you've got going on. And I'm going to read some of these reviews, especially if it's a restaurant I've never been to before. And I kind of just want to see how people um, are reacting to the business and how people like the business. So these are pretty long. I'm not going to read through them all, but just a couple things. Uh, we've got a four star review, um, someone really review the, reviewing their menu and everything they ordered and kind of just tell you how everything was, was uh, how they liked everything and how it all tasted. Um, and then in the middle, someone reviewing their happy hour and this is the first time they've been there. And then on the right, they also use the geotag in this post about the story of the review. So share your positive reviews. It's really something to be proud of. Share on your stories. Or you can even use a free graphic tool like Canva or Over, um, and you can copy and paste exactly what the what the review says and make a graphic out of it um, and promote it, cross-promote on your social channels. So I know we covered a lot so far. Oh, sorry, we have one more slide. Here's a couple more screenshots of reviews um, added as well. Okay, so I know we covered a lot here and we've got some questions. So we're gonna take the next 15 or so minutes to um, to go through those questions. And if we didn't cover anything you guys want, feel free to drop a question in and I'm gonna read through them right now. Great, thanks so much, Kelly. Um, I really appreciate all of this valuable information that you're sharing with the industry. Um, before we go to the q and I just wanted to remind everyone that you will get a copy of this webinar um, sent to you and we'll also have this up on our foodandbevshows.com uh, so you can listen you know, back and review at any point. Um, Kelly, if you'd like, I, I could read you the questions. I know quite a few have come through. Um, that makes it easier for you. Yeah, that would be great. Let's do that. Okay, great. Um, the first two questions we had here uh, kind of piggyback a little bit off of each other, so I'll just ask them together. Um, how often should someone post on social media, and is there such a thing as posting too much? Yeah, there's there's definitely a thing as posting too much. You don't want to post so much content that customers kind of get lost in it. You know, you really want to highlight what's important, um, what kind of content in message you're trying to get across. Um, but you should be posting, stay, stay very consistent with posting. You can post stories um, every day, right? Um, but I recommend a solid three to five posts on your feed a week. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, and you talked a bit about the uh, content planning and I know there was a link shared with everyone to the audience. Um, but how many months out do you suggest uh, for, for folks to plan the content? So it really depends. It really depends on your business. At least plan a month out. Um, so plan a month in advance for the next month. But um, just stay on top of it. And you can easily look up content calendar um, templates on Google to kind of plan your content. and plan around holidays, plan around specials, you know, daily events, things you're doing. Um, but I would definitely say a month or two out, plan your content because then it's easy. All you have to do is post it. You know, you don't have to spend so much time planning what you're going to post while you're running your business. And if you have it planned out enough in time, you can spend the time really focusing on engaging with your customers, reading comments, reading messages and responding with them. 
Great, thanks so much, Kelly. Um, next question we have here, how do you obtain user-generated content? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple ways, um, and you, you can simply just start asking customers that come in, hey, do you guys mind um, doing a post in here or posting a picture, um, even just leaving us a review? Um, but a really neat tool that you can that you should start doing, like I said earlier, is start using local and branded hashtags because then you can search the hashtag and see what pe what people are posting using the hashtags and tagging you in. And also, um, I didn't go over this earlier, but if you go to your Instagram profile, the icon on the right that looks like it has a little person in it with a box around it, if you click that, it's going to pull all the photos up that you are tagged in. And those are user generated posts. So then you can go ahead and repost those. Great, thank you. Um, this is from Sam who asked, could you please explain how to select the best hashtags? Yeah, so I would start with your business, your, your business hashtag. So hashtag the name of your business. Um, and then some a few good local hashtags. So hashtag um, the name of your town. So I use Scottsdale AZ because that's where I live. Um, but also you can use surrounding town zip codes, um, areas around you, uh, really where your customers are coming from or where your customers live. And then depending on your posts, I would hashtag things that are related to your post. So if you're posting a picture of happy hour special, um, you want to hashtag happy hour, um, you know, H double H H for happy hour, but spend some time searching for branded hashtags and really look at the number under that branded hashtag to see how many people are currently posting and talking about that hashtags. Um, so do some research, spend some time, maybe get a solid like 10 of them to reference in your notes. Um, and do that every month, spend a little time every month. Um, kind of updating hashtag SKUs. Great. Um, and that actually goes into the next question we have here. Um, do you believe a business gets good value from hiring an external social media manager? Um, they feel as if there's a lot of heart when the owner posts and social media manager posts tend to come off as disconnected. What is your thought on that? As long as you're communicating with the external company helping run your social media, like what you are wanting to post um, and how to be genuine in the posts, um, you know, especially if you're giving them content to post, I think that's totally okay. And having an external company do your social media doesn't mean that you don't have access to it, right? So if they're um, if they're posting weekly for you, you can still get in there and you can post daily stories. You can engage with your audience by responding to comments um, and messages. So um, I don't think it's disingenuous at all, um, as long as the owner is making sure that they put a touch on what's being posted. Yeah, no, that that makes that that sounds great. Thank you so much. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and we have uh, two more questions here. Um, how do you, you know, increase your followers? What are some, ex you know, ideas or examples you can give? So the biggest thing I would say, um, well, first of all, just know you don't grow an Instagram audience overnight. It takes time. So the biggest thing is to be, is to stay consistent with your content. Don't ghost your audience. Don't go from posting every day or every other day to not posting at all. Stay consistent with them and really engage. So if people are commenting, comment back, um, maybe at, comment something that's a question so it really engages them and gets their attention. Um, we're gonna drop a link on some more strategies on how to get more followers that you can kind of read through, but the top, the top things that come to my mind are stay consistent with your content, pay attention to what people want to, be, want to see. You know, if you're posting happy hour deals or if you're posting um, pictures of just your restaurant. See what's getting more engagement and more likes, more comments, um, and just make sure you're really posting the right content. Yeah, Kelly, thank you. Staying consistent, that that sounds um, the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. And our last question we have here actually is around the, you know, what's currently going on in, with the pandemic. Um, do you suggest 
you know, is a good idea for people to be posting um, the safety precautions that restaurants are taking um, and making references to that on Instagram? Yes, absolutely. And I know I didn't cover that um, in our webinar, but absolutely post what precautions you're taking post, you know, if you're doing nightly cleaning, if you're going to be wearing masks, wearing gloves, let your customers know, because when your customers see what you're doing, um, as far as keeping everyone safe and healthy, they're going to feel more comfortable coming into your business. Um, and they're going to feel, you know, that they're able to come visit you while still remaining socially distant and staying sanitized and healthy. So absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, and actually, I think that wraps up our questions. Um, but Kelly, thank you so much. I, I know that I certainly learned a lot today and I really, really yeah. appreciate your time um, with, our, with our audience and attendees. I don't know if you have any last thoughts that you'd like to leave with everyone. Um, not really. I'm just so happy that I got to do this for you guys. Um, hope everyone stays safe and healthy. And, you know, remember, do what you love, love what you do, go out into the world and, and be yourself. Great. And thank you. And actually, for everyone, um, for the links that were sent to you in the chat, um, Kelly, is there a way, if needed, that, you know, we can, they can contact you, um, I can share your, your information in the thank you email. Um, or even we can share the links. I just, I just hope everyone's grabbing those right now so that you have, um, have those at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. We can share the links with everyone and I'm going to drop my email for you to share. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help. Um, and we're also going to drop a link for a free social media assessment. So if you guys are looking for a free social media assessment, we can, um, we'll send a link for you to fill out and we'll have someone from GoDaddy Social give you a call and kind of talk through your social media, some new strategies and really um, personalize it based on your pages. Great, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, again, um, have a great afternoon. I hope you stay cool in uh, humid, hot Arizona and um, hope everyone stays safe and well. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.